Let's start. So today we continue uh, the um, orthogonality and uh, also yeah the um, set of uh, orthonormal or orthogonal vectors and also yeah the main topic of today's <coughs> lecture is this uh, Gram Schmidt's process and so at a high level it plays a role of I mean, given a linearly independent vectors, okay, linearly independent vector set, so we will uh, study how to change them into a also orthogonal set, okay, orthogonal uh, vector set from linearly independent vector set. Okay, so let's start with this example. So we are given these two vectors, and then. Yeah, so let's first check uh, if they are linearly independent or not. So this one and this one, yeah, so, yeah. Clearly the second vector is not the um, scalar multiple of the first vector, right? So if we keep adding one, one vector at a time, and then, uh, yeah, uh, the second vector, yeah, we can see that uh, this one uh, is not along the um, line of the first vector, so they are linearly independent, okay? And then, um, so, we studied the uh, one theorem in the previous chapter that the um, orthogonal set is automatically linearly independent set, right? But the um, linearly independent set is not necessarily an orthogonal set. Yeah, so that is quite obvious because if we compute the um, inner product between them, yeah, so one times three, and uh, six times two, and maybe zero, and then this one is clearly not zero, and thus uh, their uh, angle is not 90 degree, or their inner product is non-zero, right? And so they are not orthogonal. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, so what we want to do here is that, given this subspace spanned by these two vectors, which are linearly independent, so they are the uh, basis of this subspace, so we want to find out another set of basis vectors that are now orthogonal, okay? Okay, so let me show. So the idea is that, uh, yeah, we still utilize the idea of adding one vector at a time, okay? And then, yeah, so when considering the first vector initially, and then let's think of the uh, some smaller subspace spanned by only this single vector x1, okay? And then now, let's see. Yeah, let's call it as maybe w1. And then let's think of this uh, vector v2 uh, and it's a decomposition or the um, orthogonal decomposition of approach W1 and yeah, X2, which is called the um, X2 hat, for example, and plus Z, right? So that means we want to decompose this X2 into two parts where the first one is belonging to the subspace, I mean, uh, belong, belonging to the given subspace. And this Z, the remaining part, is orthogonal I mean, it's uh, belonging to perpendicular, uh, or the W perpendicular, which is the um, orthogonal complement. Okay. And then, how do we obtain this first part, or X2 hat? Okay. So, yeah, that is quite simple. Um, given this X1 as the, the single basis vector that spans our subspace W1, okay? So this part, okay. Yeah, so inner product with the, our basis vector and the inner product with the basis vector and our given vector x2, right? And then uh, uh, after multiply, yeah, after computing this a scalar value, and then we just multiply it with the um, original, um, yeah, basis vector x1, right? Okay, so that is corresponding to 
this part and this part okay and then once we subtract this from our original vector x2 which is like this x2 minus this guy okay this is our corresponding z part right and that is orthogonal to w1 right so let's just uh, compute this guy and then the inner product yeah the scalar value is this guy and the x1 is this guy and then the original vector x2 is 1 2 2 right and then we obtain this as 0 0 2 <coughs> okay and then you can just uh, verify it being uh, orthogonal to w1 by just computing the inner product between these two and that should be always zero right because that should belong to this guy okay and then our conclusion for this kind of problem what was our goal in this example we wanted to change we wanted to obtain or yeah orthogonal basis for the same subspace w spanned by these two linearly independent vectors so they were not yet orthogonal i mean uh, they are just linearly independent vectors and then um, this x1 and this v2 or this uh, z part okay just uh, uh, combining them or collecting them and then they are a new basis vector for the same subspace w uh, w okay and they are now orthogonal basis okay so what we did was to change this uh, v2 into uh, sorry uh, this x2 into this v2 and then the initial one x1 and this v2 those two are orthogonal basis vector okay and then let's see let me see so let me just uh, draw one figure so uh, geometric kind of understanding or explanation about this kind of process that we did in the first example is as follows so suppose we are given this uh, v1 and v2 they are just uh, linearly independent right and then we change it this uh, v2 um, let's see we compute the um, orthogonal projection in this guy uh, is uh, our projection part which is the um, first part of this guy and then after subtracting it from our second vector and that will be this perpendicular vector this guy so moving this vector so that the origin I mean the starting point becomes the um, origin here and then I just moved this vector in parallel okay so this vector is the same vector right okay so this guy is let's see it was okay so initially we are given x1 and x2 right and then this guy is v2 right and so we are leaving x1 as it is and v2 so they are orthogonal as we saw earlier and so they are automatic yeah they are just all yeah they are uh, obviously linearly independent and then here the point is that the span of these two is the same as span of x1 and x2 which are our subspace w okay So that way we found this x1 and v2 as our orthogonal basis for our subspace and uh, yeah let's yeah let's understand why the span of these two are the same <coughs> so let me use just uh, my finger so, so this one is v1 and suppose this this one is v2 and then we perform the um, orthogonal projection onto the first line and then the remaining component of this uh, vertical vector okay so this vertical vector which is our 
blue uh, vector here. And that vector is just a kind of having the 90 degree between these two, right? But uh, my point is that, so this uh, kind of a slanted version, which is just a linearly independent vector, uh, their span is still the same as the span of these two orthogonal vectors, right? So you can see that, yeah, the span remains the same, right? And then, yeah, let's try to kind of uh, formally prove that, okay? Okay, so let's focus on this uh, V2, okay, V2. And then V2 is represented as this form, right? So we just uh, subtracted uh, this uh, orthogonal projection part from the original vector x2. And then uh, from the um, linear combination perspective, this guy, this whole expression is still viewed as linear combination of x1 and x2, right? So that is having the linear combination coefficient of 1 here, right? And then this part has the second linear combination coefficient. So still, it is a linear combination of an x1 and an x2, right? And then <coughs> that means this V2, okay, V2 is belonging to our subspace W, right? So it means that uh, the first vector, uh, first vector V1 didn't change at all, right? And then we obtain the um, second vector that is still belonging to our subspace W, and this one, V2, is still linearly independent of X1. They are not just linearly independent, they are just, they are uh, orthogonal, right? Orthogonal is much more strict condition than the uh, linear independence, right? And so, we found that two linearly independent vectors. So the first one of an x1, it didn't change, but the second vector that we obtained here, v2, right, is still a linearly independent of x1, and this guy was also picked up from w, because that is still a linear combination of an x1 and x2. So we found two linearly independent vectors, right? And then what is the dimension of this subspace? Initially, this subspace is spanned by these two linearly independent vectors, right, x, x1 and x2, and thus we know that the, sub, the dimension of this subspace is 2, right? Dimension is of this subspace is 2 because it's initially spanned by these two linearly independent vectors, right? And so the dimension is 2, and then now we found another set of these two linearly independent vectors right and thus they will be automatically a new basis of our uh, of our same subspace does it make sense so that was called what that was called a basis theorem okay basis theorem so it was around in the let's see maybe over here not this figure, but uh, yep. So this basis theorem is telling us that yeah. So in this theorem, I mean, we are just uh, reviewing or trying to remember what we studied in this uh, in this part. So this theorem is telling that uh, suppose we are given the subspace, particular subspace, and then we know that it is a p-dimensional subspace, right? And then, within our subspace H, we, uh, we choose P number of vectors that are linearly independent, and then they will automatically uh, uh, fully span our subspace, right? And thus, they will be automatically a basis. And also, if we find that the, uh, if we find another P number of vectors that fully spans uh, this given subspace H, and then they are automatically linearly independent, right? So by definition, the basis, yeah, I mean, what is the two condition of the basis of a subspace? The basis should fully span the given subspace, and then the basis uh, doesn't allow any redundancies, and thus they are linearly independent, right? So in this case, in this theorem, 
given the um, p dimensional subspace. So we know that the subspace dimension is p. And then if we find the p number of vectors, that just satisfies only one condition of either being linearly independent or fully spanning our subspace. And then it automatically satisfies the other condition. And thus, that p number of vectors will be a basis vector of our subspace. Do you guys understand this? You can do it. 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 y o 베이시스가 만족해야 되는 건 뭐냐? 네, 그 주어진 서브스페이스를 다 뒤덮을 수 있는 벡터들 그리고 아, 얘네들이 다 중복 없이 리니얼리 인디펜던트한 벡터들 그러니까 전체 우리한테 주어진 서브스페이스를 다 뒤덮어야 된다? 이 조건 하나 두 번째는 리니얼리 인디펜던트하다 이두 개의 조건을 만족해야만 우리는 걔네들을 베이시스라고 불러요 그리고 그 베이시스의 개수를 우리가 디멘전이라고 부르고요 그 정의가 그랬죠? 네, 근데 이 띄어럼에서는 이제 우리 서브스페이스가 그 베이시스 자체는 아직은 모르지만 하여튼 이게 p 디멘전 서브스페이스 그러니까 p 계 리니얼 인디펜던트에서 풀리 스팬 되는 서브스페이스다 라고 하면 그러면 이제 여기서 이 서브스페이스 이 서브스페이스에서 우리는 그 p 계 벡터를 찾때 걔네들이 리니얼 인디펜던트 한 벡터 p 계를 찾으면 걔네들이 자동으로 베이시스가 된다는 뜻이에요 즉그 말은 베이시스가 만족해야 되는 두 가지 조건 중에 나머지 하나 그러니까 리니어 인디펜던스 말고 또 다른 조건이었던 네, p 계가 이 저기 서브스페이스를 다 뒤덮는다. 이게 네, 자동으로 만족이 된다는 뜻이고 또 거꾸로 이 p 디멘션 서브스페이스에서 이 p 디멘션 서브스페이스를 완벽하게 스팬을 통해서 풀리 뒤 그러니까 완벽하게 뒤덮게 되는 p 계 벡터를 찾으면 걔네들은 중복이 하나도 있으면 안 된다. 즉 걔네들은 무조건 리니얼리 인디펜던트해야 된다라는 뜻이에요. 그래서 두 조건을 만족해야 되는 게 베이시스지만 <웃음> 두 조건 중에 하나만 만족하는 조건을 찾으면 즉 근데 중요한 단서는 우리의 서브스페이스가 p 디멘전이고 우리가 p 계 벡터를 찾았을 때그 p 계 벡터가 이제 둘 중에 한 조건을 만족하면 나머지 조건이 자동으로 만족이 되고 그래서 그 벡터가 그 벡터 세트가 이제 베이시스 벡터가 자동으로 된다. 그게 요 띄어름이에요. 네. Okay, so back to this example. So, yeah, applying that theorem, we know that uh, this subspace is initially, I mean, yeah, it is initially spanned by the, the two vectors, and thus uh, the dimension is two, right? And then we now uh, found that the, found the two vectors that are linearly independent, and thus they will be uh, just uh, another uh, valid basis of our subspace. But now, <coughs> the main point of this theorem is that we actually obtained an also orthogonal basis of our subspace. So that is the point. Okay? Given the linearly independent basis, we were able to find orthogonal basis. Okay, so what if we have a more than two vectors? Then the, the process will be exactly the same. So we start with the first vector, and then we still apply the, um, we still use the strategy of adding one vector at a time, okay? So when adding, I mean, these two vectors are linearly independent, but uh, if you compute their inner product, and then they're, they are not linear, uh, they are not orthogonal, right? And so we want to change these uh, set of three vectors into orth orthogonal set of, ba uh, set of vectors, right? Orthogonal base, uh, vector set. Okay, so we added the first vector with no problem, and then when adding the second vector, and then we change it into orthogonal version of the um, basis vector. So that uh, by just uh, computing this, x, x2 is decomposed into this guy. And this guy is what? This guy is pro orthogonal projection of this uh, x2 onto w1. And what is w1? This W1 is just a span of the first vector, x1, right? <coughs> so we just apply the same formula that we just used in the previous example. 
Okay, so as we can see, the formula is exactly the same, right? And then this guy is our, uh, yeah, this guy is replacing this guy, okay? So instead of this, we use this vector, and then this vector is at least orthogonal to the first vector, okay? And then what can we, yeah, uh, yeah, what should we do on, uh, with this uh, third vector, okay? Third vector. And that third vector is still the same. So given this third vector, so now our subspace spanned by the previous vectors, okay? So that is called the um, W2, which is spanned by maybe X1 and maybe X2, okay? So equivalently, you can use this uh, X1 and uh, yeah, in, in the place of an X2, you can use this uh, V2, right? Because these two are spanning the same subspace, right? So they are still the two different versions, two different basis vector set for the same subspace spanned by X1 and X2, okay? But uh, here, yeah, we usually use uh, these two, uh, the original basis, okay? Original basis. And then we want to decompose X3 into the two parts. I mean, we just directly apply the orthogonal projection of X3 now onto the subspace of W2, right? Which is spanned by the previous vectors and then the Z part, right? Okay, and then if we subtract this part from X3, which is our Z, that will replace our uh, third vector x3 and then as we proceed this uh, this procedure the steps and then x1 and uh, maybe uh, this z which is called maybe v2 and this guy is called uh, v3 right and x1 and v2 and v3 so these three vectors are new basis vector that are orthogonal to each other right and so now we change the linearly independent basis into orthogonal basis Okay, so let's look at the formula. So we obtained the V2 over here. And then now, yeah, I'm gonna explain it a little bit later. And then, uh, okay, so V3 is our Z part, which is uh, after projection, uh, after, which is obtaining after projecting X3 onto the um, W2, which is spanned by the previous two vectors. And then we just apply this formula. So in this example, yeah, so they used um, this X1 and V2, okay, so instead of an X2, but uh, it really doesn't matter. This guy will remain, still remain the same, okay? <coughs> so this part is obtained this, and then uh, this, uh, subtracting this from <coughs> X3, we will obtain this vector, and then that is our new third basis vector, which is orthogonal to the previous two vectors. Does it make sense? Any questions? No. No. <웃음> 요식 자체가 요식 자체가 V1과 
하여튼 두 개의 베이시스 벡터가 올사고널 셋일 때에 그 서브스페이스에다가 올사고널 프로젝션을 했을 때에 저 공식을 적용할 수 있지 얘랑 얘가 올사고널 벡터가 아니면 그냥 리니얼 인디펜던트한 벡터가 아니면 네 그러니까 네. 걔네들의 스팬 되는 서브스페이스로 올사고널 프로젝션을 하면 저 공식을 그대로 쓸 수가 없어요 네 그리고 참고로 저 벡터들이 어 리, 지금 문제가 저 공식을 쓸수 없는 이유는 혹은 원인은 쟤네들이 리니얼리 인디펜던트한 벡터면 아, 저 공식을 쓸 수가 없고 애초에 우리가 올서 오늘 프로젝션을 배울 때 올사고노 올사고노 어, 베이시스를 우리가 가정을 했었죠 이건나 여기서 보면 이 theorem이 중요한 애였죠 근데 저 subspace w에다가 올사고널 프로젝션을 <웃음> 해주는 저 y 헷을 구하려면 저 y 헷은 이런 공식으로 나타내어지는데 여기서 쓰여지는 베이시스 벡터 이 subspace sub, w의 베이시스 벡터는 올사고널 벡터로 주어져 있어야 돼요 올사고널 베이시스로 그렇죠? 그래야 이 공식을 적용할 수가 있고 올서고너 베이시스가 아니면 이 공식을 적용할 수가 없어요. 근데 올서고너 벡터가 아닌, 그러니까 리니얼리 인디펜던트한 베이시스 벡터가 있을 때, 애도 여전히 이런 뭐 이렇게 좀 네, 기울어진 네, 각도가 90도가 아닌 이런 벡터에 의해서 서브스페이스가 이루어져 있고, 이거를 이렇게 뭐 이렇다고 할때 점을 여전히 그 서브스페이스로 올서고너 프로젝션을 할 수가 있겠죠. 그렇죠? 그러니까 이거는 베이시스의 문제는 아니에요. 사실 올서고너 프로젝션. 우리는 언제나 수선의 발을 내릴 수는 있거든요. 근데 그 수선의 발을 실제로 계산상으로 구할 때 올서고널 베이시스가 주어지면 저 공식을 쓰면 되고 올서고널이 아닌 그냥 리니얼 인디펜던트한 벡터가 주어지면 리니얼 인디펜던트한 베이시스 벡터가 주어지면 그때는 올서고널 프로젝션이 어떻게 될 것이냐 네. 그 공식을 우리가 다음 시간에 배워요. 네. 그게 이제 마지막 우리가 다루게 될 마지막 챕터고 네. 따라서 이제 아까 여기서는 이거 뭐야? 네 여기서는 이제 이 공식을 사용을 하려면 이두 개가 올소고널 베이시스를 사용을 해야 되니까 아까 이제 첫 번째 그냥 그냥 두개 리니얼리 인디펜던트 하기만 했던 x1, x2를 사용을 하면 안 되고 얘랑 이제 x2의 올소고널 버전 얘를 사용을 해서 구해야 돼. 오케이, okay, so <웃음> So we apply this uh, this orthogonal projection formula, right? Uh, in order to obtain uh, orthogonal basis vector of a subspace, and then uh, in this case, we assume that we are given the um, ortho orthogonal basis vectors, right? And so back to this thing, when projecting, let's see, yeah, when projecting x3 onto W2, which is spanned by the previous two vectors, and then in order to obtain this projection as this guy, okay, as this guy, we need orth orthogonal basis vectors, not the um, linearly independent ve basis vectors. And thus, these two should be, I mean, the first vector, yeah, we just use it as the uh, initial first one, and then for this uh, second one, we shouldn't use this guy which is not orthogonal one but instead we have to use this guy right okay so that way we obtain this orthogonal projection and then subtracting it and then this one is the third vector uh, which is which completes our orthogonal basis vector set any other questions Ah, de. 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 De.
왼쪽? 네. 저거요. 그 디렉션이랑 네. 하신 거. 네. 근데 해보니까 Y가 나오더라고요. 응. 그래요? 네. 아, 근데 이건, 이건 지금 밑에가 지금 요 밑에는 지금 노음이에요. 저 길이에 해당한 상수고. 네. 그렇죠? 아, 그 다음엔 요게 이제 이너 프로덕이고 네. 요거는 점을 쓰면 안 되죠, 사실. 이건 이너 프로덕이 아니니까 그냥 상수 곱하기 저 벡터니까 그래서 여기서 얘기하는 게이 오른쪽이 이제 벡터 방향만 나타내는 길이가 일자리인 방향을 지정해 주는 애고 왼쪽에 움직이질 않네요 어? 네, 요 놈은 요 놈이 이제 순수하게 그 벡터의 길이 나타내는 애죠. 그쵸? 그 코사인, 이렇게 해갖고. 그래서 이제 저게 벡터의 길이, 오른쪽이 이제 방향. 그래서 요거를 같이 쓰면, 네. 예, 네, 그렇죠. 이놈, 그니까 왼쪽은 스케일, 스칼라고, 네, 왼쪽에 저 연두색, 저 사이언 색깔은 스칼라고, 오른쪽은 저게 벡터니까. 그죠? 네. 하여튼 이제, 이제는 점을 좀잘 써야 돼서 약간 좀 성과시긴 해요. So here, yeah, this guy is clearly an inner product between this guy and this guy, which is now represented as y transpose u1, or maybe u1 transpose y. So they are the same thing. And then this, in this, uh, it is just a scalar multiple, right? It's not an inner product, right? So please don't get confused. <laughs> okay, any other questions? 여기 이거요? 어, 그러네요. 어, 그러네요. 네, 이게 맞죠. 어, 네. 위즈 프라임이요? 네. 그걸 내가 설명을 해줄게요. 네. 네. 그래서, 하여튼 요 공식을 내가 좀 의도, 의미한 이유, 아니면 이걸 굳이 설명한 이유는 좀 이렇게 하면, 사실 이게 공식이 좀 약간 복잡하잖아요? 거의 무슨, 네. 약간 좀, 좀, 약간 좀 말이 안될 수도 있지만 약간 간장 공장, 공장장 약간 이런 느낌이잖아요? 뭐, u1, u1 분의 뭐, y1, y u1 뭐 이런 식이잖아요? 거의. 운이 비싼데 어쨌건 네. 그래서 이게 좀뭐 사실 외우기 싫어하는데 네. 외우기 싫어 또 공식 좀 하여튼 싫잖아요 그래서 저거를 여차하면 바로 유도를 할 수가 있다는 거예요 저렇게 나도 저거를 개인적으로는 아마 못 외우고 있을 거예요 네. 그래서 그때그때 그때 유도를 해서 쓰거나 네. 그렇게 하죠 어쨌건 그래서 분모에 이제 이쪽에 있는 요거 길이로 노멀라이즈 해준 거 네. 이렇게 빛변에다가 이 각도 코사인 세타만 곱해야 되니까 온거 요거는 이제 그 이제 방향 성분을 이제 길이를 일자리로 만들어 주기 위해서 또 그게 들어오죠 그래서 이두 개가 동시에 이렇게 들어와서 u1 <웃음> dot u1 이렇게 되는 거예요 그리고 이제 역시 마찬가지로 이제 다시 여기로 돌아와서 네 여기서 이게 잘못됐죠 이제 v1 v1 그 다음에 이건 v2 아 이것도 v2 프라임이 돼야 돼요 It's the same vector가 돼야 되니까 v2 프라임 ok so there is typo here So in the denominator, we need the squared norm of the um, basis vector, right? The v1 and v2 prime. I'll just explain what the um, v2 prime is. Okay, but uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the correction. But anyways, yeah, we can obtain this uh, orthogonal projection in this manner. And then now let's explain. Uh, let me explain why. Uh, what is this uh, v2 hat? So in the previous chapter. Uh, We studied about the orthogonal basis, but also we can think of their orthonormal versions of these basis vectors, right? So given the orthogonal vectors, we can just change it into orthonormal vectors by just normalizing it, each individual vectors so that their length becomes one, right? Okay, so in this case, once we obtain the orthonormal vectors, then This projection part or this projection computation becomes really simple, right? 
and uh, in detail this part this part will be gone and also this part will also be gone right so if we just uh, go back to the previous chapter this guy okay given the um, also normal basis vectors right and then the projection will be just represented in this manner right so we no longer have the denominator part which is a little bit annoying right we can just comp compute the um, inner product with the given vector y and then the each of our basis vector which are orthonormal the basis vectors right and that will become our coefficient of this uh, each component each each of our basis vectors right so that is kind of yeah that uh, simplifies our computation in case we have an also normal uh, basis vector is instead of or orthogonal basis vector right and so let's apply that into this uh, process that we just studied here okay and so it is just a uh, kind of adding the normalization step at each yeah each of these uh, each of these procedures of adding one vector at a time and then uh, orthogonalizing it okay so initially this guy is not on ortho orthonormal vectors right so preserving the direction we just uh, scale it or normalize it so that their length becomes one and then how yeah we just compute the length of this vector one squared and one squared and one squared and one squared and so the length of this vector is two right okay so we just do the scalar multiple of this vector by half, right? And then that is our first orthonormal vectors. And then what about the um, second orthonormal ve basis vector? So the remaining part is the same, but uh, if we use this guy, uh, one half of this original vector, and then this projection part, this one will be gone, because this one will always be one, because of the, um, def of the um, unit vector. Right, and so the computation becomes really simple. But uh, once you compute it, uh, when using this original vector or one half of this original vector, and then this uh, z part will still be the same, right? And that is our second orthogonal vectors, right? But this guy is not having a length of one. That is not a unit vector. So we just perform. Okay, so in this case, uh, in order to obtain the um, simpler numbers, it just uh, scaled it by four, but the scaling is not necessary, uh, in my opinion. You usually normalize it so that their uh, length becomes one. <coughs> but in this case, the computation is really a little, yeah, a little dirty in this case, because the norm of it is like computed as yeah, 9 over 16 and uh, 16, 1 16 and things like that, and then square root of it, right? But still, we can normalize this V2 so that the next projection, I mean the projection of the subsequent vectors becomes easier, right? So because this, these two parts are gone. And then this, re this uh, third one can also be normalized, right? And that way, we can obtain uh, ortho orthonormal basis vectors with no problem, right? So, yeah, it's a normalized version. It's called this a V2, a V2 prime, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's not really kind of important. And uh, we will see this kind of normalization in the, in the next slide, I believe, yeah. Any other questions so far? Okay, so <coughs> overall, this kind of process, yeah, so uh, I'm gonna skip this uh, figure. And so yeah, so when adding V3, so V1 and V2, and then the, the subspace spent by the previous vector, and then initially this uh, V3 is a linearly independent vector from the previous two vectors, but we just uh, project it orthogonally, without, well, completely <coughs> pro orthogonal projection, and then this uh, uh, vertical vector, which is uh, orthogonal to the, um, previous vectors and that is our V3 and that way we obtain this uh, yeah or orthogonal basis vectors okay and then this this is called gram schmidt process okay gram schmidt process is changing or converting uh, linearly independent vectors into orthogonal vectors okay 
So that is called Gram-Schmidt's process. And then uh, it can be generalized in this manner. So the first one, and then the second one, uh, minus the projection part, and then the, the third the linearly independent vectors, and then this guy is the projection part uh, onto the subspace spanned by the previous two, and so on, right? Okay, and then the span of these two versions of the um, basis vectors will still be the same because, I mean, the proof is really, yeah, extended straightforwardly. So this guy is still, yeah, this uh, V3 is still a, a linear combination of an X1 and uh, V1 and V2, right? And thus, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can just apply uh, what we just uh, discussed over here. Uh, okay, so... You guys remember that V2 is still a linear combination of an X1 and X2, and thus uh, that is also chosen from the same subspace. Okay, so these uh, vectors from V1 through Vp obtained in this manner, so that is they are also a valid basis vector, and they are orthogonal basis vector. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, so in this case, uh, yeah, we can obtain this also normal basis. So I just, uh, I already explained it by just normalizing, normalizing it after we obtain this uh, Z part, right? And now let's look into the next half of this chapter, which is called the um, QR factorization. So pre, yeah, pre, yeah, this is a, uh, another uh, form of a uh, matrix factorization or matrix decomposition. So given a single matrix, we want to represent it as a multiplication or the product between multiple vectors, uh, sorry, multiple matrix. So we want to decompose or represent this given matrix A into the product of these two matrix of Q and R, right? And then Q and R should have a specific, uh, specific uh, shape and also uh, some specific condition that we that we assume in this uh, QR factorization. So previously we uh, studied uh, <coughs> yeah another uh, matrix factorization. What was that? Yeah. LU. LU factorization was the the yeah another matrix factorization that we studied, right? And so we now uh, study another uh, interesting matrix factorization called the um, QR factorization. And um, yes, as you study uh, later on in, in, in your future, maybe in the sophomore and the third, yeah, third year and, and so on, you will see some other matrix factorization and uh, one possible matrix factorization is called the um, singular value decomposition. Singular value decomposition, okay? So, so that is like the um, final boss uh, in this uh, linear algebra, so once you completely understand that and then you kind of feel yeah you can feel uh, c quite confident about your kind of background on the uh, linear algebra but uh, yeah but in this class yeah we cannot cover up to that point but uh, we yeah we reach really close to that but uh, I kind of yeah always fail to to reach uh, that point yeah but anyways um, yeah, if you have chance uh, in the future, and then uh, yeah, I strongly encourage uh, you to look at, uh, yeah, study that in more detail. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions in the future, and then uh, yeah, feel free to let me know and uh, yeah, send me an email or just uh, visit me freely, and then I'll just explain it more clearly and de in detail. But anyways, yeah, so we studied the LG factorization, and uh, also in the chapter five, we studied also. Uh, another de matrix decomposition called the um, eigen decomposition, right? Eigen decomposition, which is like the square matrix A is decomposed into V D V trans no V inverse, right? This guy was another uh, matrix decomposition by using eigenvector and eigenvalue, right? And so, just to review, remind you guys, this guy D is diagonal matrix, right? And then Along the um, diagonal uh, uh, entries, yeah, we will place, yeah, we will put the um, eigenvalues, right? And then this V is just a 
composed of these uh, columns as eigenvectors, right? Okay, <coughs> so this was the um, another uh, matrix decomposition, but now in this chapter, we study this uh, QR decomposition or QR factorization, and then uh, let's look into this uh, factorization in more detail. So in the in the case of an eigen decomposition, I mean, yeah, let me just ask some uh, review questions. So in the case of an LU decomposition, is it possible to uh, decompose a rectangular matrix A, or should it be always a square matrix? So again, is LU decomposition possible for rectangular matrix, or is it only possible for the um, square matrix? Okay, so this is an LU factorization. Okay, so LU factorization is assuming, I mean, uh, yeah, we can use any rectangular matrix, right? And then uh, it is decomposed into lower triangular and the um, upper triangular U. And then uh, if uh, A is uh, maybe 4 by 5, and then this L, this L is always square matrix. Because L is a collection of the um, elementary matrix, right? Like a row interchanging and a row uh, replacement and so on, right? <coughs> and so, <coughs> no, uh, in this case, we do, not, we do not allow row interchanges, right? So we only do the um, row replacement in this case, right? And then this U is our echelon form, right? So echelon form means that it should have the same size of the original matrix A. So in this case, L is 4 by 4, which is a collection of elementary matrix, which are each of which are each of which is a square matrix. And then this U is rectangular matrix that has the same size as the original matrix A. Okay, so that was the. Um, LU factorization. So in this case of yeah, but uh, in the case of an eigen decomposition, I just uh, erased it. But uh, yeah, this uh, eigen decomposition uh, is it possible that this A is a rectangular matrix or should it be always the um, square matrix? It should be a square matrix all the time. It doesn't allow any square uh, rectangular matrix because in the case of an eigen value and eigen vectors we always consider only the um, square matrix, right? Only the square matrix can be considered for computing eigenvector and eigenvalue, right? And thus this eigen decomposition, A is assumed to be a square matrix, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, so back, yeah. Uh, <coughs> when it comes to this uh, SVD, singular value decomposition, you can just, yeah, you can understand it as the, um, uh, rectangular version of the matrix for its eigen decomposition. I mean, the SVD is simply a eigen decomposition for the um, uh, for the um, square matrix. Okay. Ah, sorry, uh, rectangular matrix. So in the um, eigen decomposition, uh, we only allow the um, square matrix. But what if we have the um, rectangular matrix? Can we obtain uh, kind of similar kind of a similar matrix decomposition? Uh, which is composed of the um, eigenvalue and eigenvectors. Okay, so those eigenvalue and vectors are uh, corresponding to singular ve value and singular vectors in the case of rectangular matrix. Okay, rectangular matrix. So, yeah, even though we do not cover the um, full details about this SVD, but uh, you can have this kind of high-level understanding, and then uh, when you when you come out. Come, up, come across with this uh, SVD in, in your future, and then uh, you can kind of have, an, have this kind of understanding which will, which will make it easy to understand or study this. Okay, so, yeah, so back to this uh, QR thing, QR decomposition or QR factorization. This QR factorization is assuming M by N matrix which has this uh, linearly independent columns, linearly independent columns. 
So in this case, <coughs> A can be like this, right? 5 by 3, right? Which uh, is composed of three linearly independent vectors in the R3, R, R, R5, in the five dimensional space, right? But what if we have maybe three by five? So in this case, it cannot have the um, linearly independent colors because we have a five different columns in three dimensional space and thus they should be linearly dependent columns, right? Yeah, in terms of their pivot positions and so on, right? And so we always have a free variable there. <coughs> okay, so we yeah we consider the rectangular matrix, but uh, that rectangular matrix has the linearly independent columns, and thus uh, it should have this kind of shape where m is greater than n or equal to n, right? Because the um, square matrix still can have the uh, linearly independent vectors. <coughs> okay, so in this case, the QR factorization is as follows. The first matrix Q will have the same size as the um, original matrix A. And then our matrix R is a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay, so this is 5 by 3 and 3 by 3. Okay, and then this guy, yeah, which is uh, called the Q and R, among these, uh, between this Q and R, this R is a upper triangular matrix, similar to kind of LU factorization, okay? So this R is an upper triangular matrix, which means that, okay, so this part, so this, this part will be non-zero, possibly, but this part will always be zero okay and then how do you obtain this uh, q and r given a matrix a okay and this qr factorization is not new one so this uh, we already studied we are yeah we already uh, covered more than half of this uh, qr factorization already through the um, previous examples uh, which is about the um, gram schmidt's process so we are given a three linearly independent vectors, right? And then we want to just change it into orthonormal or orthogonal basis vectors, okay? Orthogonal uh, vector set from this linear initially linearly independent vector set, okay? <coughs> Okay, and then for this uh, Q, just for the um, convenience, we just assume that this Q is composed of orthonormal columns, orthonormal columns, okay? But still, the span of these orthonormal columns from Q is the same as the span of the um, original column vectors of an A, okay? So considering the subspace spanned by the three initial, three input columns in our matrix A, and then uh, we want to find out the um, orthonormal basis of the same subspace, okay? So that will be placed, that will form our matrix Q, okay? So here, the three columns. Yeah, how do we obtain these three columns? We just apply the gram schmidt process, given these three vectors, okay? So the first vector will be just a normalized version because uh, there is no other previous vectors, right? And then what about the um, second vectors? Second vector, we just uh, projecting it onto the, um, onto the subspace spanned by the first one, and then obtain the remaining part, which is the um, orthogonal part, right? And uh, normalizing it, and then obtain this uh, second vector. And then we obtain the third vector in the same manner by just exactly following the gram schmidt process, okay? And then what about <coughs> What about our R? And what about this uh, matrix factorization? We just convert it linearly independent vector set into also normal vector set. But how can we equate or how can we make this matrix A equal to the product of these two matrix of Q and R? Okay, so initially, yeah, again, Q is also normal 
versions of the, um, uh, of the um, input vector A, right? And then how can we reconstruct or how can we form our matrix R so that these two parts, A and QR, becomes equal to each other, okay? So that is really simple. And that this, uh, this R just uh, naturally computed, naturally computed through our Gram-Schmidt process. So let's, uh, let's just uh, look at the um, example here. So suppose we are given this matrix A. So the first one and the second and the third one, which are just uh, linearly independent vectors. <coughs> OK, <And> then <coughs> yeah, let's apply the gram schmidt process and then form our matrix Q. OK. So this guy is normalized into the um, unit vector, right? So this is our <coughs> first, first vector in this part, this guy, right? So we obtained u1. So let's call it as u1 and u2 and u3, which are also normal vector set. So we obtained u1 there, right? And then yeah, so yeah, one, 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 one. And then it became, uh, it became one half, <coughs> one half. Yeah, so let's change it as four, just to uh, make it uh, suitable for the um, uh, example that we are looking at. And then this uh, first vector of one, 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 one was just normalized into one half and one half. Yeah, four one halves, right? Okay, and then let's just uh, fill, fill this uh, matrix R as well. So here we just apply the um, column combination perspective of a matrix multiplication. So in this case, we are given these three vectors. And then their linear combination will form the first vector. And then what is the um, linear combination that forms the um, first vector in the left matrix? That uh, linear combination coefficient will be coming from over here, right? Okay, and then we just uh, try to represent this or reconstruct this uh, linear combination representation. Okay, so <coughs> even though we do not know u1, u2, or u3, we actually don't need them in order to reconstruct the first vector. Yeah, let's call it as a1. In order to reconstruct the A1 as the linear combination of these uh, U1, U2, and U3, we don't actually need U2 or U3. And so we can simply set those two linear combination coefficient value as zero, right? And then what is this guy? What is this guy? That is actually our normalization factor. So from this, how did we normalize into this? So we first computed the norm. 1 squared, 1 squared, 1 squared, and 1 squared, which is 2. And then that is the scaling factor that was multiplied over here in order to make this u1, right? And thus, in order to make the um, original vector, this guy will be our normalization factor, right? So suddenly, <coughs> in this matrix factorization, we first, yeah, we completed or we filled out the first column of Q and the first column of R. Right? So basically, this part and this part was done. They were completely filled out, right? <coughs> okay, and then the next, yeah, what about the next guy? Next guy. <coughs> okay, so the next vector is this guy. In the, uh, let's see. <coughs> in this example, the next vector is this guy, right? And then uh, what was the next step in the um, uh, gram schmidt process? We first compute the, um, or yeah, given this uh, second vector, yeah, we first uh, compute the um, orthogonal projection of it onto the, the sub, uh, subspace spanned by the first vector. And then let's use the um, also normal basis vector because that will simplify our computation, right? So this, this, uh, this part 
this part is just a v2 dot uh, so this uh, x2 dot v2 uh, sorry uh, okay u1 right u1 is what u1 is this guy this guy is u1 right Okay, then this part was computed as 3 over 2, okay, 3 over 2, and that is the length part, that is the length part, and this is the direction part, right, so this is the length and uh, this is direction, and then after subtracting it, we obtain this, right, and let's just normalize it. So that is uh, vector length is become becoming one, and then this guy is what? This guy is the also normal version of the second vector, right? So does it make sense? So we just apply the gram schmidt process, and this guy, this guy will be the second vector in our also normal basis vector, and that will be placed placed in this part u two. Okay. Okay. So up to the second linearly independent vector, we completed Q1, uh, the first and the second column of Q1. Uh, sorry, Q, uh, which is uh, U1 and U2, right? And then what about this part? What about this part? So this part is what? So these uh, three values will work as a linear combination coefficient. Okay. That that will reconstruct the given second vector, right? And then let's try to find out this uh, linear trans yeah uh, linear combination coefficient over here. And so at a high level, at a high level, we don't actually need u three in order to reconstruct the um, a two, right? Right? Because <coughs> A3 was not involved at all, I mean, U3 was not involved at all, okay? And so here, we want to represent A2. Yeah, so yeah, it is a yeah, X1 and X2, just to be consistent with the notation in the example. Okay, so we want to represent X2 as a linear combination of U1 and U2, right? And then these linear combination coefficient will be placed over here and over here, right? And what would be that linear, what, what would be these linear combination coefficient? So those linear combination coefficient will be just naturally coming from this gram schmidt process, okay? Okay, so this one is our x2, right? x2 is this guy, x2 and u1, which is our uh, 3 over 2, right? And then that is the length part, and then, and let's not use a dot here, and then u1, right? And that is, that u1 is this guy, one half and one half and one half and one half, right? Okay, so what, I, what I'm doing is that uh, I just move it to the uh, right hand side, okay? In order to obtain the linear combination representation of x2 in terms of u1 and u2, okay? Okay, so the linear combination coefficient corresponding to u1 is this guy, 3 over 2. And what about the um, linear combination coefficient associated with u2? How do you obtain this guy? Okay, that guy is just coming from the, normal, uh, the normalizing this guy into this guy, right? Because this guy is u1. Ah, sorry, u2, yeah. right? And that u2 came from this uh, remaining factor uh, and normalizing it, and that's uh, how we obtain this uh, u2, right? And so, yeah, x2 minus this guy, okay, this part is the same as this guy, right? But that guy is represented as a scalar multiple of u2, and then that scalar multiple, this which is this guy, is just a... Uh, 
the length of this remaining part. So does it make sense? So we have to just compute this guy. Okay, and then square root of it. And then that will be that will be the length factor or the normalization factor. And that is computed as this. I'm, I'm going to just uh, skip the detailed computation. Okay, so this guy is this this uh, question question mark box, right? And then <coughs> now we completed, or now we obtained the um, linear combination representation of x two in terms of u one and u two, which are our orth also normal basis up to the second vector. Right? Okay, so this guy is coming from here, and this guy is coming from the normalizing process, okay? Making it as a unit vector. Okay, so these two guys, okay, will form our second column of R2, which is here and here, right? That's how we uh, fill out the second column of this matrix R, okay? And then you can now easily fill out this uh, remaining or the final column, right? <coughs> okay, so given the um, x3, which is the third input vector, and then we just uh, compute the um, projection of x3 onto w2, spanned by the two also normal basis vectors that we obtained, which is u1 and u2, right? And so we obtain this, and then, yeah, and then this is the remaining part, and then this guy will be further normalized uh, so that it can have a unit norm, right? And that unit norm, I mean, this guy has the length part of this, part, yeah, this value, and and then uh, if we represent this x3 as a linear combination of u1 and u2 and u3, what is the linear combination coefficient? Uh, this guy is coming from this guy, right? So we just move it to the right hand side in order to obtain the linear combination representation of x3 in terms of u1, u2, u3, right? And then what about this guy? This guy is this, right? And then, yeah. This guy is the length part of this part, yeah, this vector, right? <coughs> so that way, we bring these uh, 1 and uh, 2 <coughs> over square root 12 and uh, 2 over square root 6, and that will form the second, uh, uh, the final column or the third column of our R. So that completes our R, uh, QR factorization. Okay. So, at a high level, given the uh, matrix A composed of the uh, linear, uh, linearly independent, I mean three linearly independent vector in this particular example, we obtained also normal version of the um, basis vectors, right? That spans the same subspace spanned by the columns of an A, right? And then what is the um, R? So R, just R is obtained or computed naturally from the gram schmitz process, right? So that way we obtained A as the yeah, QR factorization of uh, representation. Any questions? No. X2, X2 yeah? No. Yeah. 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 <웃음> 이게 부가적으로 조건이 하나가 좀 트리비얼한 좀, 네, 어, 좀 마이너한 조건이 하나 있는데 그 조건이 뭐냐면 이 R이라는 매트릭스가요 여기에 파지티브 엔트리라는 이런 조건이 좀 있어요 나는 뭔가 강의를 숫자는 거의 안 보고 하는 것 같네요 
어쨌건 예. 아래서 요 파지티브 자 다이아고널 파트에는 다 파지티브 엔트리가 있어야 된다라는 이런 조건이 좀 있어요. 네 그러면 요 조건은 이제 어디서 얻어지느냐? 이거, 이건 파지티브 엔트 아닌데? 그죠? 이거 뭐, 예제가 잘못됐나? 그럼 이게 돼야 될것 같은데. 근데, 하여튼, 요, U2에서 이걸로 만들려면, 네, 요 값을 이제 만약에, 이거 좀 잘못된 것 같은데요, 제가? 이건 아까 조건에 만족도 안 하는데? 네, 플러스로 보시죠. 네, 플러스가 돼야지 될것 같아요. 네, 이거는 이제 오타인 것 같고, 그 다음엔 여기에 아까 QR 팩토라이제이션. So, I think uh, uh, it is uh, an error, so we should have a positive <coughs> values over here because they are just directly coming from those two linear combination coefficients. But at the same time, so I just uh, mentioned or I just wanted to point out additional assumption or additional requirement for this uh, QR factorization, which is that the diagonal entries of our, our R should be positive values. Okay? So that is positive values. So in that case, how can we guarantee our diagonal entries are all positives? So that is, I mean, let's just focus on this entry. And that entry is coming from the normalization of this matrix into this. And this guy is our normalization factor, right? And so that normalization factor, yeah, is always positive because that is the length, that, is, that corresponds to the length of the vector. So that is the positive one, right? And then also, what about this guy? So this guy is coming from also the normalization of the um, first vector, right, into this vector. And so basically all the um, diagonal entries in our R and also this guy is the normalization factor of this guy, right? And so these are all positives, right? <coughs> so it is automatically, uh, yeah, it is automatically holding true once you just to follow this uh, gram schmitz process properly, okay? So I think it's uh, in this example, yeah, it, yeah it, it is an error or the typo here. Okay, so that way we obtained the Gram yeah, Gramschmidt, I mean the QR factorization in this manner. Uh, yeah, so in this manner over here. And then, yeah, so the time's up, so I wish I finished this chapter, but uh, yeah, I'll continue next Tuesday. Okay, yeah, so we have two more classes, right? Until next, next week. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, see you next time.